Welcome to part two of acid-based disorders and thank you for tuning in. In part one of this discussion, we came up with a chart which was designed to enable us to figure out which of the four primary acid-based disorders is causing an imbalance. And if you recall in that chart, this is the table we were able to come up with. A case of acidosis simply means a case in which the pH is reduced below 7.35. It could either be a case of metabolic acidosis or a case of respiratory acidosis. If it is a case of metabolic acidosis, the major event here is a loss of bicarbonate. The compensatory event would be in this denominator here. It will, go, it will decrease in the same direction as this arrow. In the case of respiratory acidosis, the major event here is an increase in the partial pressure of carbon dioxide and you would expect a compensation in this direction in the bicarbonate. Similarly, in the case of metabolic alkalosis, the major event is the increase in the bicarbonate ion and the compensation will occur in this denominator. It will also be an increase in the same direction. And then in the case of respiratory alkalosis, the primary event is a loss of the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in this direction, the loss. And the compensation would occur in this direction. Okay? Now, compensation is simply uh, the body's attempt to normalize the ratio of the bicarbonate ion and then the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. The whole idea is to normalize this ratio and return the pH of the body to normal. A normal pH is typically 7.4 but this is hardly ever achieved. But this is exactly what happens. From the standpoint of um, the buffering system of the body, and keep in mind the blood has a very high uh, buffer capacity, we would actually be referring to this ratio. And this ratio signifies a conjugate base over a weak acid, in this case carbonic acid. So this is actually from the standpoint of the buffering capacity of blood to restore the pH to the body when there is an imbalance in either this or that. All right. Okay. Now let us take an example of um, a case of um, metabolic acidosis. All right. In this situation. The primary event is a loss of bicarbonate and the pH of course is going down which means that the pH is less than 7.35. So this is a case of metabolic acidosis, metabolic. Okay, now what we observe here is that if there is a change in this component, this is the abnormal component, this is the primary event, 
this loss of bicarbonate and the corresponding decrease in pH. The compensation will occur in this component here and it will occur in this direction, in the same direction as the primary event. So if this change occurs, then there will be a lowering of the partial pressure of carbon dioxide which causes the patient to hyperventilate. Hyperventilation simply refers to the situation in which uh, there is an increase in the rate or depth of breathing and then the patient could be seen blowing off uh, carbon dioxide in an attempt to return the base to acid ratio to normal. Now, let us take another example. The case of metabolic metabolic alkalosis. Here, once again, we'll have the relationship and the primary event is an increase in the bicarbonate ion. So a case of metabolic acidosis, alkalosis, I'm sorry, uh, there is a gain in the bicarbonate ion which increases this component, this metabolic component, with an increase also in the pH. The compensation event would occur here and it will attempt to increase. So that's how the body responds to this gain in bicarbonate, by depressing the um, respiratory center, which will result into um, a, a retention of carbon dioxide. That condition, of course, uh, is uh, called hypo, hypoventilation. Ventilation. Okay? So, it is important to first of all ask the question, is the pH increasing or decreasing? In this case of metabolic alkalosis, the pH is increasing. And this is a primary event in which there is a gain in the bicarbonate ion concentration. The body attempts to restore this pH to normal by also increasing the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. That is a compensatory response. Okay? Now, having said that, it is important to point out that Compensation can take one of three ways. Let us put it this way. Compensation. Compensation. It could be a case that is fully compensated. compensated, sorry, or it could be a case that is partially compensated or thirdly it could be a case that is uncompensated, that is not compensated. Now, what do we mean by each of these? A case that is fully compensated is one in which the pH is approaching normal. Here, if it's fully compensated, what you find is that the pH uh, would be approaching normal. pH will be approaching normal, would tend to be normal. pH tend to be normal. If it is partially uh, compensated, um, 
the pH will just be trying to approach normality, 7.4. Uh, keep in mind that you would expect a pH of 7.4 in a fully compensated um, response, but this is hardly ever achievable. On the other hand, in this other situation, there will be no change in this relationship. Say here, for instance, um, you have uncompensated. If you have a situation where you have um, the bicarbonate ion and then the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, if this is the major event, say a loss here of the bicarbonate, this will remain normal. It will remain within normal range. Nothing will happen. So you say this has not been compensated. This is a case of uncompensated response. Okay? Now, having said that, let's quickly go into um, some of the exam questions you might encounter, which is, of course, the focus of this presentation to prepare you for the kind of questions you could encounter in the exam. One thing I must make very clear is that this is a very simplified um, um, uh, review of compensatory uh, mechanisms and what to do. Uh, it is more detailed than this. For example, uh, if you need to further evaluate the compensation uh, to find out if there are other underlying processes in the case of mixed uh, acid-base disorders, you will be required, for instance, to calculate the anion gap. And if the anion gap is elevated, that's something like greater than 16, then you might go to the next step, if necessary, to figure out what the uh, delta ratio is. Okay? So this is not uh, what this presentation is designed to explore. This presentation wants to keep it simple to those facts that you need for the exam. So here is then is an example of the kind of thing to anticipate in the exam situation. This question says that the following data were extracted from a patient's arterial blood gas analysis where the pH is 7.25, the bicarbonate ion is 15 millimoles per liter, and then the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 36 millimeters of mercury. The question is, which result best depicts the patient's acid-base disorder? A, is it a case that is fully compensated metabolic acidosis? B, uncompensated metabolic acidosis? C, uncompensated respiratory acidosis and D, partially compensated respiratory acidosis. What I have done in this question here, for instance, if you look at that, is to put acidosis in all four responses. That, what that does is to minimize your chances of guesswork. And uh, if I had put one of them alkalosis, you may have been able to figure out based on this low pH that, okay, I can knock this off and then take a guess. What I don't want you to do is to take a guess. I want you to approach the exam with the confidence that you bring into the exam room. And so approach this question with the confidence that it deserves. And then you get the response that you need. All you need to do is to, let's push this a little backwards here. Put up this little relationship here. The relationship between the uh, pH, the bicarbonate as a numerator, and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide as the denominator. Then you ask, you put in the data given to you. You were given 18, so you just put it here in parentheses as 18. And then, um, is that correct? No, 15, I'm sorry. Okay. And over here, you have 35, uh, 36 
I'm sorry. Now, what do this mean? The pH, by the way, is 7.25. 7.25. What this means is that you need to have known before this time what the range here is for the biocarbonate. It ranges from 22 to 26. That is one of those few things I urge you in part one to memorize. What is the range here? The range here is from 35 to 45. Something you need to memorize. And then the range for the pH, of course, is from uh, 7.35, okay, to 7.45. So as you can see, the pH is decreased. So you put your arrow down here. And then as you can clearly see, 15 is way, way below 22. So this is decreased too. Now, how about here? 36 is within this range. So there's nothing here. You don't have to put an arrow downwards here or upwards. In other words, there is no observed compensation here. So the first thing to determine is it a case of acidosis or alkalosis. It is one of acidosis. And you have four acidosis responses in the question. Is it metabolic or respiratory? It is metabolic because there's a decrease in this component. This component here, the numerator, refers to the metabolic process. So this is a case of metabolic acidosis and the correct answer because there is no compensation here is B a case of uncompensated metabolic acidosis you see that's how to approach the question there could be variations and variations of this question and if you don't know it then it becomes something for conjecture but if you do know exactly what to do which is what this video is designed to achieve to give you that level of confidence you need then this will be a breeze you just walk through it and say wow i aced it so this is the end of this presentation and thank you once again for tuning in good luck as you prepare for your exams